Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris of Della Sews on Social Media. Welcome back to Sew Over 50 podcast on Sew Organized Style. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. On Sew Organized Style podcast, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we record this podcast and pay respects to the elders past and present. Thanks for joining us on Sew Over 50 podcast on Sew Organized Style. Sew Over 50 intersects with all communities. We're a community that is so over ageism. Thanks to two new lovely patrons, Stephanie and Diane. Every patron's monthly support gives me the encouragement to keep podcasting for you. Thank you also to every listener who is helping keep this very small podcast head towards its 1.5 million download milestone soon. Today's Sober 50 podcast guests are the two co-founders of Sewn Adaptive. Lynn Branley is a costume designer and her Instagram account is at LWS underscore Lynn Wardrobe Sews and Alexander Adronescu, fashion designer at Alex of Arabia. In this recording, you'll hear what motivates them to use their industry experience to help adapt clothes for all parts of the community. They're sharing their knowledge with us through their videos on Instagram at the Sewn Adaptive account. In this podcast, Lynn and Alex talk about their experience through the Runway of Dreams project earlier this year. Hi, I'm Alex of Alex of Arabia. I've had a factory in Los Angeles for quite a few years now. You're a little more than that. Okay, so should I restart? (laughs) Is this kind of like a takes thing? Should I restart? (laughs) I used to work in Italy. I was doing tailoring for a while and I went to school in New York. And now I run Sewn Adaptive with Lynn, which is growing very quickly and is super exciting. And I am Lynn of LWS, Lynn Wardrobe Sews. I'm a costume designer for film and television, have been here in Los Angeles for the past 20 plus years. Yeah, I'm the co-founder of Sewn Adaptive with Alex. Thank you for introducing yourselves. It's very clear that you're both very talented in your areas of expertise and this discussion about adapting clothing will be a learning experience for many sewers. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, Lynn has an extensive background in sewing and costume and costume design for film and television. And I've done a lot of work in tailoring and mass production factory work. So combining the two has been really, really good for trying to change clothes, I guess, or alter things in, in particular ways. We look at things differently because we kind of get a, a great perspective change, you know, on, on everything that we do, you know, creative or practical. It's really beneficial for sure. So you've developed Sound Adaptive this year. So what brought you both together? Well, we had started to work together and Alex actually had gotten an opportunity for us to work as a sewing team, tailoring team for a runway show with an organization called Runway of Dreams Mm -hmm. that is specifically about bringing about awareness of the need for adaptive clothing for the fashion industry. And we worked their runway show here in Los Angeles earlier this year. And that's where the whole concept came from. We were unaware of the need. Mm -hmm. There are brands that are starting to do adaptive clothing, which is amazing. But the reality is that for every person with disabilities, the need for there to be an alteration or a change is almost inevitable. After having that experience and our perspectives changing, being in the fashion industry, we decided that we wanted to do an educational platform that could show not only the tailors and the sewers what these kind of alterations look like, but also to the home sewers and potential new sewers also how to do these alterations so that they could do them for themselves or for their loved one. Through your videos, Sewn Adaptive will definitely spread the alteration knowledge you both have through your extensive industry experiences. I had a look at the Runway of Dreams videos via YouTube to see the variety of adaptions that were made for each of the models and the joy on their face was very infectious. I think what you can do is you actually you watch this runway show and it's yep. parent in some cases and some not necessarily there are people that have disabilities. The fashion and the clothing look like fashion and clothing. The adaption isn't necessarily in your face and something that you can see. We know because we did it, but it's allowing a huge demographic of people 
who haven't necessarily been included the opportunity to have real independence, not only in how they dress, but in getting to choose what they wear with confidence. You've already shown people some of the adaptions through your Instagram account. You've done videos and shown people some of the adaptions that can be made. Can you talk us through just a couple of those? Well, you know, one of the most popular adaptions that we did, or adaptations, I should say, was replacing the button-down shirt buttons with uh, Velcro patches. And in that way, we made it a lot more accessible for people with dexterity challenges that, you know, can be really difficult. You could have an upper limb difference, which would mean that you might be missing your fingers, you may be missing a hand, you know, I think it's important to talk about that because I think the terminology can be almost taboo and people want to talk about it, but, you know, that's a, if you don't know what it is, if it's not expressed, then it's never going to be, you know, understood. Upper limb difference is referring to people who may not, you know, have, have hands from amputations or that were from perhaps an accident or a later amputation, or it might be a congenital or you're born with it. Mm -hmm. But it could be challenging to button a button up shirt because you don't have the dexterity or it could be as simple as, you know, having very severe arthritis and and that could be very, very hard to to button that button up shirt. Creating the adaption that we did where we added Velcro patches and, you know, we really covered the details on how to do every aspect of it on the Instagram page. It's really cool to be able to offer a solution for people. That was probably my favorite one that we do. And it's really consistent. I mean, that's something across the board that we see with with all kinds of brands that are creating adaptive fashion, that the buttons are tricky. And that's in pants, that's in shirts. Um, Another popular one we did was the portion one for our friend Oscar, who is a a skateboarder. And he really wants to wear his hoodies, the ones that are long, the long sleeve ones. But he can't because he has an upper limb difference and they fall down. He has to just keep his arms in his pouch if he wants the sleeves to stay up, but it's not really comfortable. One thing we found was that we could hem the sleeves by recreating the cuff at the end. And fortunately, although the sleeves are objectively shorter, when you lay it out flat or when somebody else might try it on because they were fitted to Oscar, they don't look like they've been altered they look like proportionately it's made for him and it it fits just fine and that's a really important thing that we wanted to cover was that fashion should be inclusive it should be for everyone to wear he should be able to wear his favorite sweatshirts his favorite brands especially when it comes to skater brands and without limits he shouldn't have to necessarily just look for one type of brand he should be able to alter And, and really we try to make the alterations as simple as possible so really anybody could do it. I I think that we've covered about six or seven topics so far. Mm -hmm. I think even a beginner sewer could get a lot of that done. Yeah, especially the last one and the Velcro one. That's the other thing we try to really do is keep in mind the manufacturing background and then like a home sewing background and, and try to always speak to both so that everybody can benefit. It's like alterations that everybody can do. I mean, one of the other... uh, adaptions is magnetic buttons but to find those at a retail level that takes a lot more effort they're a little bit harder to get your hands on and they they can be kind of tricky because they can be problematic with medical devices or they can get stuck to everyday objects which could be inconvenient or um, uncomfortable for somebody who's wearing the shirt i've seen magnets put in and i've seen the velcro options And that's something that's, I think, important to stress too, is the quality of the material that you use when you do the adaptations. The Velcro brand products are really the best ones over time that seem to hold up. Their traditional classic hook and loop is really good, very universal. And what what was the name of the softer ones? The sleek and soft. That's the one thing we've come to realize too, especially with like notions and closures, is the quality of brands out there that have closures that, you know, are in that adaptive category. And by far, Velcro brand hook and loop is superior, mostly because they have such a large variety Mm. of options that you would use differently. You know, it's like what you would use on a lightweight boil blouse would be very different than the type of hook and loop product that you would use, say, on a denim. And Velcro has way more options than a lot of people realize. We want to get into doing that in the video talking about these are all available products the majority of what we would use for sewing are 
products that would be available online to everyone, certainly, and definitely in a lot of craft stores, even internationally, I think. They are more available. Can you tell us about some of the clothing adaptions you've made for Misty? Misty's uh, adaptations have been mostly proportion adaptations, also for stature and for fit. Misty has spina bifida, and so she has a very unique body. We all have very unique bodies that need adjustments all the time. And Misty is not afraid of showing exactly the challenges that she faces with spina bifida, which is so cool, which, you know, is a discussion for another time of how important it is to really express what the challenges are so that people out there like us really can, you know, try to make things that make your life easier. But she needed alterations like um, hemming mostly, but trying to keep the design details of certain garments. She had a really pretty free people pajama set and it had a bias hem detail and a high-low shirt on the top, but the, the, high, uh, the bias detail was on the pants. And so what we had to do was compensate for that, uh, measure both her right and left leg, because I think people tend to get a little lazy and just measure one leg. That mm-hmm. doesn't always work for anybody. We just had to take it up and make it look the same. And, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about proportion with our friend Oscar, but, you know, when you see it in person or photographed when it's done correctly, an alteration or tastefully, instead of just lopping off the excess fabric, it looks correct. It looks just like the e-commerce photos on the Free People website when Misty did her photo shoot for them, even though we had to shorten it, which is the idea behind good alterations is that it doesn't look like it had been altered. It looks like it has was made for you. And so that's really the majority of the alterations that we've done for Misty and, you know, making sure that she's comfortable with the crutches that she has and and how that works when she's walking. And and she is, and she's very transparent about any challenges that she might be facing or needs that she has when we do the alterations. It's really cool to have somebody like that when we're working. And we really try to have that conversation with everybody who comes in for Sun Adaptive. So we want to encourage everybody who has unique challenges to reach out to us and let us know. Yeah. I think the fact that you've also made those changes and to what she had and then showed the images in the way that they are shown by the brand Free People was also a good way of making sure people understand that the changes were made to suit her and she still looks fabulous and it looks the way you would have expected that garment to look. Exactly, exactly. For us, one of the exciting design challenges with which every opportunity we do these alterations is to not compromise the silhouette and to have it be every bit as fashionable as the brand intended while having the adaptation to help with any challenges. And, you know, those are kind of the three points that we shoot for, you know, and the good news is, is it's totally possible. And so for the community that is disabled out there, there's no reason why anything ready to wear that you like, brands that you like, you can wear. The alteration is is possible. The adaptation is doable. And it's good that Sign Adaptive is helping sellers to understand the ways that we can help adapt clothes for wearers and that they're easy enough to do. Right, they, they are. What adaption ideas do you use for people with limbs that have varied widths? We've faced that challenge before. And, you know, we tend to work with garments that are relatively easy to alter. That can be a particularly challenging alteration because they may not develop evenly. Mm -hmm. That can be, you know, a debate on whether you want to make, if you were talking about pant legs, for example, whether you want to make both pant legs very large to accommodate the larger leg or whether you make them both proportionately fitted. And I think that that really comes down to a style choice when it comes to like the print and the fit of the particular garment, mm-hmm. because there's some cases, uh, for example, on very wide leg pant, yeah. that going with the wider look, you know, it would carry over throughout both mm-hmm. legs and it really would create a discrete cover. While if you were going with something like leggings or tighter fits, you know, you, you would want to taper both legs individually, yeah. you know, keeping the style over the fit. There's some decisions to be made there. There's some calls, which is why we want to really open up that discussion as far as clothing goes, because we see a lot of brands uh, coming out with some great products that are adaptive. Mm -hmm. You know, the list of disabilities is really extensive and 
from disability to disability, even within the same type, there's so much individuality and so much uh, unique challenges that come with that, that it's almost impossible to not have alterations be a major part of that. Thanks for answering that question. What are some of the examples of clothing adaptions you've made for people who need to use wheelchairs? Obviously, if you're sitting down, your shirts tend to wrinkle up and then they scrunch up because the shirt is designed to be worn while standing. Mm -hmm. While some people are able to walk even for a short period and and use a wheelchair sometimes, others are permanently in a wheelchair. And so for those who are permanently in a wheelchair, it can kind of affect your confidence. I know it affects mine when my shirts are wrinkled when I'm at a table or something like that. You know, it's not particularly fun. So what we had figured out was that if you cut the shirt into sort of a high-low shirt, Mm -hmm. whereas when standing, it would look a bit cropped, it rests very well on the thighs and it doesn't look so bunched up and wrinkled. It looks very straightforward and proportionate. And and I say high-low instead of just cutting it across because you don't want the shirt to ride up on the chair in the back. So you and keep it behind. That's a really successful alteration. We've played around with a lot and has worked out well. We're going to do a video on that one soon just to show people how easy that alteration can be yep. and what a difference it does make. I, I know that another one is the fit of pants mm-hmm. tends to be a bit more slim for people who are especially permanent wheelchair users. And so do you have the opportunity then to taper pants bit more than you might usually. It also depends on personal taste. And it's also a great point when fitting somebody who is, for example, primarily a wheelchair user, but is not all the time in a wheelchair, you do want to fit them in their pants sitting down, not standing up, because once they sit down, pants are going to ride up. That's just an important note because, you know, I think we tend to think about fittings and it's all standing without the consideration of how things are going to look when sitting. The other thing is is being mindful of silhouette choices because there are wheels. So like skirts and things, there's ways to do skirts and have them be narrower so that there's no overlap to anything that could get caught in wheels, making it less complicated. Yeah. Being sensitive to the fact that as they move and then they have the wheels that, you know, nothing gets caught in the wheels, but that they still can have, you know, a desirable silhouette seated. Do you also make adjustments at the front of pants? Yes, actually, we've done adjustments where we've had to make the rise of the back of the pant higher because when you sit down, you know, it tends to lower. As far as the front goes, yes, in certain cases, we've made adjustments to accommodate medical devices. That doesn't affect everybody, but uh, some people do require that. And, you know, also when buying clothes or buying clothes to alter, it's important to try that sitting because you know, if you buy it a little bit too tight, it sitting down might be even tighter and, and it affects the rise too. So there's certain fit and, you know, we, I always look forward to seeing those type of products for wheelchair users from fashion brands that are developing really cool uh, pants and jeans, because that's an opportunity where the sitting product would look much different than the standing product because the rise would be much higher, but would fit a, uh, a market of people who really need that. And that's a product difference as opposed to an alteration difference. We like to say that a lot of what we're, we're battling is a culture change in terms of adaptive alterations, but that's one of the few things that would be really cool to see big brands develop. We're new, but as we've started to reach out to different brands, Again, coming from that place of, you know, as people who do alterations and home sewers, Mm -hmm. always trying to make sure that we're being inclusive to the community with disabilities. And one of the areas that we've run into is to be able to promote machines that are adaptive. And the reality is, is there are machines out there that whether it was the intention or not, that you can run without the use of the foot pedal, right? Yep. They're not really promoted that way. And the reality is, is if they were promoted that way, um, you have a lot of people that want to learn to sew. That's the one thing that keeps them from being able to, is that, you know, it's like if they don't have the ability to use their feet or their ankles, it's like, you know, they need to bring everything up to the top. And so for us, you know, we would love to hear from brands that would be willing to support and sponsor because we have interest coming to us for people who are disabled that want to learn to sew and we want to give them that opportunity. 
but we need to be able to get them a machine that allows them to do that. Yeah. That's a great point about about adaptive sewing machines. I think it's a big topic that we're trying to cover. One of the core things that we like to cover at Sewn Adaptive is that everybody needs alterations. And that's something that really benefits whether you, you live with a disability or you don't. Alterations are such a necessary part of having clothing, of dressing nicely. And I think we've forgotten about that because of so you know how available quick fast fashion is and it fits generally all right, which you know for, for a little bit has been an okay image. But when clothes are altered, and I alter almost all of my clothes just because, you know, even if it's just a little bit, it makes a huge difference. And I know that all the sewers out there who who are listening have done that and are on the same page about it. But but really anybody who's doing alterations can benefit. So sewing is is definitely becoming more popular again, which is so cool. I see a lot of younger people really getting into it, which opens up avenues for adaptive alterations. You know, we were talking to somebody about how, uh, you know, well, if I buy my clothes, then I risk having to bring it into alterations where they're not totally sure what they're doing. And, you know, we're, we're really working on a type of a certification for that so we can, we can educate tailors and, and sewers on how to do those alterations properly. That's a regular fear for anybody who's buying something is to bring it in for alterations and having to pay more and, and possibly not liking the outcome. It's a universal problem. It's not something that's facing the alterations aspect. It's not something that's facing just people with disabilities. It's, it's a totally necessary aspect of sewing. And that's why we made this an educational platform instead of trying to sell any sort of a product necessarily. It's it's trying to show that there's so much out there that we can help show you how to do and above all give people whether you are sewing with a disability, whether you're sewing for somebody that you care about with a disability or or you're just sewing to make headway in adaptive fashion, independence is the biggest deal. And and having the independence to do it yourself by watching the videos or, or send it out, but the opportunity is there with all the materials lists and everything that we give you to create it yourself, to find your own solutions, to adapt in the ways that if you're living with disabilities, you've already learned how to adapt in so many ways. Yeah, and one of the things that we really want to convey is we want to hear from people out there in the community who need a, an adaptive solution. We can't know what the challenge is without somebody saying like, man, I really want to wear jeans, but this is my dilemma. There's nothing we would like more than to be given that challenge. I've made a lot of clothes over the years in in my factory, but the challenge has been really awesome. Mm -hmm. Over the past couple of months doing Sewn Adaptive, you know, having the challenges, the new opportunity to try new things, to create new things. I mean, we're we're going beyond just adaptive products or adaptive clothes. Next week is our our trip down to try to figure out an adaptive solution for uh, sewing machines. So plug, um, we are trying to figure out how we can create something that's easily changed out to be adaptive. One of our favorite brands for that is Brother. Well, you know, they're very available. And so we'd love to work with them on creating an adaptive sewing machine because we think that the possibilities are endless. And they have one of the most, I'll call it, adaptive sewing machines that you can get affordably and, and across the market. So, And affordability is such a, an important thing is. for everyone, but especially yeah. a new sewer, whether, whether they have a disability or not. Right. We all had one day of sewing one day, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's daunting. And the last thing you want to do with a a new sewer is to have them get discouraged. Right. And 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 price can be discouraging. Right. You know, it's, it's gets scary when you're starting a new hobby anytime and you're not good at it and that's okay. You never are when you start, but it can be really tricky to say, Oh my gosh, I spent like a couple hundred bucks on this idea of mine to start sewing. And it's not, fantastic but you know the patience is there the, the support is there now that we have so much like online I think, I think the sewing videos were always out there uh, especially when I was learning how to sew even though I was a little stubborn to watch the videos with videos like TikTok now or uh, TikTok and Instagram that you have you know a minute and a half explanations on how to do something almost making it more alluring to watch because they do it so quickly right it's really helpful and it it's there's so many more resources out there for home sewers or, or beginner sewers to just try something new and, and make adaptive alterations so we, we even get comments and notes about you know the stuff that we posted that would you know hey if you do it like this it's a little bit easier which is awesome and we love to hear that because you know sometimes we forget something or we didn't think of a, a solution and we just want to share that 
And I want to share that with everybody so everybody has the opportunity to feel confident in their clothes and wear what they want to wear. Lynn and Alex, you've both got your industry experience in the fields that you've been in and the years that you've worked in your industries. And you're bringing that to us as sellers in Sign Adaptive. And we can hear that you've got the commitment because you're using Sign Adaptive as this learning platform and you're going down the path of certification um, so that people realize that what you're offering is worthwhile learning, even if it's just your, I think what you're offering people from uh, who come to Sign Adaptive is the strength of your industry experience so that people can then understand how easy some of these adaptions can be, learn them and either do them for themselves or do them for others and people that they care for. Totally. Right. You know, we're, we're all professionals and we like to create, we like to create clothes that help people and the more vocal people with disabilities are about, about the challenges they face, the better we can create alterations that help them. Mm-hmm. How can people learn more about Sound Adaptive and basically get on board with what you're doing? Well, they can go ahead and follow us uh, at Sound Adaptive on Instagram. Uh, we're working on a website right now, putting that up, but uh, that is the best place to learn about us. And if they have any questions, they can email us, sonadaptive at gmail.com. And we're really, really open to any advice, anything. I mean, direct messaging too. Please yeah. feel free to reach out. Yeah. We are really want to learn as much as we can and help as many people as we can. We have new ideas every day for all kinds of things, all kinds of projects. I get excited about every new project that we work on. I can't wait to start on a weekend project myself. Lynn and Alex, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast for Cyber 50. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And have a lovely day, listeners. This episode for Cyber 50 podcast on Soul Organized Style was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Lynn and Alex of Sound Adaptive, sound by bensound.com. Listeners, if you want to provide a guest post for Cyber 50, make sure you direct message Judith and Sandy at the So Over 50 account on Instagram. Also, keep an eye out for the next So 50 Live event that Bird and Molly are hosting. Remember, these So Over 50 Live events will always be available on the So Over 50 account. You can subscribe to Soul Organized Style Podcast, but with an S not a Z on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free So Over 50 Podcast archive And if you can, consider supporting the production of this podcast on Patreon so I can keep producing it for you. We look forward to joining you in your sign room next time. Stay safe, everyone.